Thank you all um, and welcome to another episode of the Progressive Queens. I have my panelists, Mickey and Talisha here. Wave. Hello, guys. Hello. Hi. And this is going to be an interesting show um, today. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of things and get into what I really want to talk about, which is um, voter suppression. It's a, it's a strange topic, <laughs> but it's a timely topic. Um, so I first want to talk about, of course, um, the tragic news out of the Georgia area um, with six Asians being gunned down. I believe it was six, um, eight total and six were Asian. Yes. And the police officer who did the press conference, I don't know if he's just an idiot whether he's racist or a combination of both. But to say that he was, the suspect was just having a bad day. Is he serious? Mm. I don't know how many shoes I wanted to throw at my screen when I heard him say that. Well, given that he was promoting a t-shirt that was anti-Asian and they spelled the China virus on it, the way that Trump says China, right. I would say that he's racist. Yeah. You know, he actually, and why, why hasn't the police office, you know, said, you know what, you need to find another job. Isn't that a fireable offense or am I missing something? I feel like it is. Um, but when you have a systematic corruption going on, this is, this is deep South Georgia. I'm sure that there's probably less anti-racist than racist down in that police department. So what needs to happen, like what happened in the Barack Obama administration, there needs to be a consent decree descended on every single police station in this country, finding out what they're doing, finding out where the breaks and the links are, um, instituting some type of policy to get these police under control. And if they have a habit and a history of racial bias and abuse and, you know, just whatever nastiness that they have somehow been able to cover up for all these years backed by the police union, they need to be thrown out because you can't have the fox guard in the hen house because guess what? He's going to eat up all the hens. Well, that's and, the Oh, go ahead, Mickey. I'm sorry. No, when you consider that cops can kill black men, unarmed black men with no consequences, why should they get upset over somebody saying something racist? That's minor exactly. compared to the murders they commit constantly. Exactly. It, it's just, I, I mean, I'm just like, I, I can't. At first I thought, okay, I'm, I didn't hear him say that. There's no way he could have said that out loud. And then I found out about the t-shirts and I'm like, do the police, and I, I keep asking this question. It's like they go to KKK rallies and they're like, okay, you, 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 and you, yeah. you'll be good police officers. I, I, and I don't want to seem like I don't support any police officers, but this whole, well, there's good cops. Well, if they're just covering up for the bad cops, that makes them bad too. Yep, exactly. And it's just like, okay, we've got to, we've got to do yeah. something. I don't know it's, what it is. It's, it's bad enough, you know, they cry about cancel culture because we want these people fired. These people are walking the streets with a gun that they use without consequences. But this isn't just a, your neighbor who's a racist who spews bull. This right. is a man who has power and control over people. And he's walking the streets or driving in his car with that gun at the ready. Exactly. And if, if, he's, if he sees something that he thinks might be wrong, he can act and he can take a life. That, that's a big difference between your racist neighbor and a racist cop. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, also, with that, in that, in that vein, they're not living in the communities they're policing. I think it would be harder to take, a, take out a gun and shoot someone if you know that person, if you know their mother, if you know their father, if you've seen them grow up. It might be a little harder for you to just kill with reckless abandon if you know who you are policing. And you could just say, hey, you're not doing the right thing. I'm going to take you in. Or, hey, you're not doing the right thing. Take your butt home before I call your mom. And they don't have that connection with the communities they're policing. So they don't see them as human. They see them as other, especially when it's a black and brown heritage. 
they don't see us as what as human, but they'll see somebody who shoots up a freaking several spas as a human. He just had a bad day because he's white and they can empathize with him. Oh, he has a sexual addiction. Whatever the excuse they like to make up in their head, they're able to do that because they see them as human and humans are prone to error and mistakes and then just downright murder. But somehow this guy who just murdered eight people arrives alive, yet Breonna Taylor gets murdered in her own bed. Somebody make that make sense because I don't it, understand. It, it doesn't. And a mistake is like me saying two plus two is five. That's a mistake. When you're taking someone's life, that's murder. I don't care if you're exactly. a cop, a regular well, person or whomever. When you go out and buy a gun, put it in your car, and go drive to a specific Asian spa right. and open fire, to me, that is premeditated, cold-blooded murder. Absolutely. but yet, No matter what color you are. Absolutely. And then yet you have the news media sitting here running defense, telling you about all his, his mother and his father in the church. And he's got this, they give all kinds of, you know, outs for these young white people that decided they're going to go and murder folks. Yet poor little Tamir Rice gets murdered on a playground holding a toy gun. And we hear about his father who was arrested however many years ago on a weed charge. There's a problem. And in America, there is the systematic racism that is just rotten through and through. And I don't know what it's going to take to cleanse our country. Well, I was reading a news story just today that one of the spots that he hit had were investigated for sexual accusations something like 14 years ago. Yeah. And there hasn't been another problem since then. So number one, assuming that because it's Asian, it must be sexual. There, there's racism right there. Absolutely. Number two, even if it was, and it wasn't, that gives you the right to kill somebody, the, de the death penalty exactly. for prostitution. Well, apparently, according to um, one genius congressperson from the state of Texas who said, um, let's find an oak tree and a rope and and somehow he still gets to be on a committee. I, I, I don't understand that. Well, he switched the whole session, the whole meeting was about nothing else except racism against Asians. That's what the meeting was for. He got up there and started talking about lynching. Chip mm. Roy, Congressman Chip Roy, stood up there and said, we need to find a tall oak tree and get our ropes again. He brought it to lynching. Now, who who got lynched? Right, black right, men, right. black women too. As a matter of fact, black right. people were lynched. They he brought up that white men were also lynched. When white men were lynched, it was because they were rustling cattle, because they stole someone's horse. It was punitive, not right, but it was punitive. Right. Blacks got lynched because they were black. Exactly. And the fact that he didn't even have the decency to issue a fake apology. He was like, I'm not sorry. I'm like, who, who are the people electing these people? Who are they? Because actually, I'm glad he didn't. Um, don't do that. You meant what you said and you said what you meant. Stand in your, your mess. Uh, don't come out later and say it was misconstrued. You didn't mean it that way. You were talking about, you know, any aggressor, not just black people. No. You meant what you said. Stand in it. Now that's that's a good point, but I mean, I, I'm just like he 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 still gets to be on that committee. Mm -hmm. The Democrats are going to vote to take him out of the committee, like they did. Um, and um, Marjorie Taylor, 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 Taylor Green. Yeah, Green. I was like, wait, a minute, <laughs> what's the other what's the other nitwit's name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna they're just gonna let this slide, and it's like, what is I, and we ask this question every week. What is it going to take for people to say, I've had enough? Exactly. It's going to take strength on the part of the Dems, which they don't have. Yeah. Just recently, Representative Jeremy Gomez put a proposed that they oust Marjorie Taylor Greene from the House. 
that they expel her. Pelosi amazing. immediately hit the news waves to say, let's see if I can get the quote exactly. This does not reflect leadership's position. Oh, gosh. She then went on to talk about how how generous she is in letting others in the house speak their minds. Mm. You know what we call that? Well, you, you said you're offended by the C word, so I won't use it. <laughs> um, what's another word that we could? Well, we don't curse on this channel either, so the other word I'm thinking won't be appropriate either. She, it doesn't <laughs> surprise me that she does She's that. Because she stabbed him in the back like she does yeah. with any Democrat that yeah. that yeah. actually stands up for what's right. right. She has to protect her donors and the Republicans, so she stabs him in the back. I mean, who doesn't think it's a good idea to get rid of Taylor Green? I don't think Taylor Green. She's the well, only yeah. she's the only person because even the Republicans Maybe Matt Gates. are sick of her. Maybe Matt Gates. He might want her there. I think even the Republicans are tired of her act. There is, they'll never say it. Maybe a couple. So why, but... why does Pelosi stab her own person in the back? Well, she did that to the squad. Remember way back oh. in the day when the squad was coming up, she was like, well, whoever they are. What do you mean whoever they are? But you know what? The squad turned around and voted her back in as um, yeah. Yeah. So self-inflicted wound, I'd say. Um, it but who been are they going to vote for, though? Barbara Lee. Barbara Lee all day long and twice on Sunday out of California, the progressive, the only person that voted against the Iraq war, not even our beloved but Bernie. She Barbara Lee. I think Barbara Lee would take it. I think she feels that she's too progressive and she probably doesn't have the votes, but the yeah, squad gonna... has a way of putting that pressure down, honey. And I say they get on every news station, they go to everybody's town and talk about how Barbara Lee wants to fight for you and she should be the Speaker of the House. Nancy Pelosi is out of touch. She is rich. She needs to go. Is that because she ate that ice cream? It's because of the freezers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I'm serious. I really, and I know people are going to say, you're not progressive. I did not have a problem with the ice cream. So let me tell you what it was. It, it I wasn't like the that ice cream. Fancier ice cream. It, I don't like that cheap stuff that you can buy it, for a dollar. It wasn't, that. It, it wasn't it was, the ice cream. It was the timing. It was we are yeah. in the middle of a pandemic and That's people true. are starving and about to get evicted. And this heifer, all she can think to talk about is her, her ice cream and her big, beautiful, uh, what is it? What is the uh, material? Uh, is, I'm blinking on the, the fridge. Chrome fridge. It's yeah, something. chrome. Stainless so, steel. Stainless steel. I could not remember that. And this is all you can do as opposed to maybe going and chatting with some folks that are hurting and that be your, your spot. And it might have just been a photo op, but at least it would have showed you gave some type of darn. These people. But I look can't. at Ted Cruz. He went on vac. He went to, he tried to go to Cancun. I mean, yeah, they're all. They're we don't expect anything from the Republicans. The Democrats at least pretend like they're for the people. The Republicans have always been about self and big business and the free markets, anything that would keep them from taking care of the little guy. The Democrats pretend to be for the little guy, yet secretly vote against us every chance they so, get. I, I consider that a, a plus for Republicans. At least they stab you. They come at you from the front. <laughs> Democrats <laughs> stab you in the back when you're not expecting it to come. Absolutely. And then criticize you when you say something against them. Oh my yeah. gosh. And then that's when we start talking about that civility. It's not civil to speak against your own party. It's not civil to campaign against incumbents, even though the incumbent is taking money from big corporations and big pharma and doesn't care about their constituents and hasn't lived in that district for years and doesn't even come home on their breaks to actually have town halls with their people. And But you're the uncivil one for calling out their behavior. That's a problem I also have with the progressives because they've eaten that hook, line, and sinker, and they don't call them out by name. They speak in generalities as opposed yeah. to saying, this person is blocking this bill from getting to the people. This is who's standing in your way. I think they're learning a little because I've heard Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema's name thrown out there. I've heard Chris Coons' name thrown out there. But prior years, they would just say, America, this is what we need, and we're fighting for you, but you're not telling us who's stopping you from getting this fight. You know, even Bernie did that, and it annoyed me. I'm like, call their names. Call them by call name. Them because if they're going to be bold enough to do something stupid, you know what? We should be smart enough to 
to blast them. Be like, this exactly. person who represents this district. It's just like, like I said, the Democrats have a very easy thing that they could do in 2022, which they won't do. All they have to do is say, this Republican voted against you getting a $1,400 check. All of them. All Simple. of them. Yeah. Every single Every one, one of them. Them. in those individual districts, $20 says they won't do it. Mm. They won't do it because if I said it once and I'll say it again. They want someone to blame for when they don't do anything and the Republicans exactly. are the perfect yeah, the perfect people to do it. Oh, it was the Republicans. This whole mess with Biden talking about reaching across the out. What if you have the numbers? You what are you reaching for? You don't exactly. need them. You can pass exactly. anything you want, and you don't need a Republican vote to do it. Right, and then they blame them chopping down the uh, stimulation the stimulus bill. They blame that on the Republicans. We're trying to reach across the aisle, find something that they can agree with, and none of them voted for it anyway. And I would have took that when we got a no vote from them across the board. I would have restored the original stimulus and pushed it back through. Exactly. And I'm sure the American people would have been totally fine with waiting another week for you to push a two thousand dollars stimulus. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. I think everybody would have been like, "Oh, they voted against a two thousand dollar check." Well, here comes the here comes um. Here comes election time. Guess what I'm going to do? Vote for the people that put money in my pocket. Exactly. And it's the simplest message, but I can bet literally $20 they won't do it. They'll they'll go to this. We want to make health care more accessible and talk about expanding the awful Affordable Care Act, which I'm like, this is such garbage. Yes. Garbage. I can't. I'm I'm really trying to emphasize how much... (laughs) This is garbage. We need, again, single payer health care. Some people want to call it Medicare for all, that's fine. But this whole cynical, well, I'll just, it's like they're saying, I'll say enough just to get elected. Exactly. Then when I Bare minimum. Get yeah. there, I'm not going to do anything. The buffo crumbs, and people will be happy. They'll say, well, it's not what I wanted or what I need, but it's better than nothing. Uh, no, that yeah. that angers me. To, I can't describe how angry I get. Why is it better than nothing? How about we get what we need and want? You know, when when the vast majority of people, both Democratic and Republican voters, want universal health care. Why can't we get it when... Both parties, the voters want it. That's they have a mandate, exactly. and yet our representatives still ignore it. We we know why we can't get it. Anthem United Signa Humana. That's exactly why we can't get it. That's because exactly if we right. had a single payer health system, not to say they couldn't exist, but they would be making far less money than they're making now. I think the CEO of United makes, and I want to get it right. Did he make $56 million? I forget the amount that he made, but it was just like, I'm not against people making money because I have enough sense to know that we live in a capitalistic society. Fine. But when you're making literally billions of dollars and you're not such as a case of Amazon, you're not, you're not at the bottom. You're suppressing people at the bottom's ability to make more, but you're getting constantly rewarded. You're not getting taxed. Um, you're you're buying off politicians. Right. Um, yeah. I'm just like, okay, maybe I'm just one of those people that thinks, you know what, it's time that not only we get what we need, we need to get what we deserve. Exactly. That's exactly right. And I'm sorry, guys, if y'all don't mind, if we could go back a little bit um, to the uh, the murders for the, the spas that killed um, six Asian women and two other folks. Um, there's some narrative um, that the news media and certain folks are trying to push is that a lot of this anti-Asian hate is stemming from the Black community. And I really need to get it on the record that it is not the black community and maybe stop with the stop the anti-Asian hate hashtag and start stop the white terrorism hate because they're simply simply 
there's a homegrown white terrorism problem in this country. The FBI has identified it. Several of us being murder has murdered has identified it. You know, through our deaths, um, over and over again. The common denominator is normally a white male with a gun. And I need that to get out there because they like to put, maybe there was an, a fight between an Asian and a black person, probably stemming from some anti-black um, behavior on the part of the Asian, not that I'm victim blaming, but a lot of the times when they come into the black communities, they look down on us, yet they still take our black dollars and then they cycle it through their community. It's fine, everybody gotta get their come up, but you don't have to disrespect us. So when there's a fight there, they try to push that towards the anti-Asian hate train that does not exist. What exists? Well, the white terrorism problem. The anti-Asian, the anti-Asian hate train started several hundred years ago yeah, here. Exactly. They they actually passed laws to make it illegal for a white to marry an Asian. Mm. We know, we all know about the miscegenation laws here about whites couldn't marry blacks, and that wasn't repealed until the sixties, nineteen sixties. But it was against the law. For, it was against the law 200 years ago for Asians to go to white schools. Mm. That's that's not a new thing. It's not blacks causing the Asian hate. The exactly. Asian hate started a couple hundred years ago. No different from the black hate. Exactly. You know, the core problem is white supremacy. And until exactly. we, until we say, you know what, racism is a problem. But you have. You have the media, like you said, that builds into this with these false narratives of Asians hate Blacks, Blacks hate Asians. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. We need it to come up the, the core of the problem and it's white yeah. supremacy. Exactly. And, yeah. and I'm not saying it, every white person is a white supremacist. I don't believe that. But yeah. it is a problem that some yeah. white people need to wake up to it. Exactly. Yeah. And when it goes back hundreds of years, you can't blame anybody except the whites who settled this country. Exactly. You know, when they're passing laws against, the, then it was just Chinese who were coming in. Look at what they did when they brought in the Chinese to build the railroads. Exactly. They put them in, basically it was concentration camps, hmm. barely fed them. They had no problem killing them if they were, you know, if they didn't work hard enough. Exactly. They also, when the gold rush during the 18, what was it, 1849, 1869, they brought in Chinese, the Chinese to work the mines as slaves, mm. basically. And it was the same thing, same problem. They would put them in camps and they wouldn't get paid. And the few free Chinese who did mine for gold usually had their claims jumped and had no legal recourse. So this goes back hundreds of years. So there's only one kind of person to blame for it. Well, we can't we can't even get to that point where people admit it because we're prone to hear or I'm prone to hear. Well, that was the past. Well, uh, no, because you're making that. I think mm -hmm. that statement infuriates me more than anything because it's like we'll move past it. No, you can't move past the fact that our people, brown people, brown, uh, black people, brown people, Asian people built this country. For free. Exactly. And we're holding the short end of the stick. We don't want all of the stick. We realize other races exist. Right. But why don't you just say that you had to handle it? Well, I didn't have slaves. We didn't say you had slaves. We exactly. said that you're benefiting from past behaviors. That's exactly. all we're saying is you benefited from them. Exactly. But you get this whole argument about, well, move past it, forgive and forget. Forgiveness is one thing, but mm -hmm. stupidity is a whole different breed <laughs> of something. I'm like, I'm and all we for can't forgiveness. Fully heal. We cannot fully heal until we're made whole. We are not whole. We are less than half. We are treated as less than in the society. We are a third you know, we're the like the bottom of the barrel in America. Whereas when immigrants come to this country, it's almost the status quo to look down on black people and brown people, but mostly black people, because I can only really talk from my experience. And it's almost peddled into the mindset that blacks are less than, 
And until we get this new, you know, get the concept in that Blacks are just as human, we bleed the same red blood, we work the same amount of hours, if not more, we are doctors, lawyers, teachers, garbage men, we make the world go round just like every other race. And until we are treated that way, and until the playing field is leveled, we're going to constantly have this uprising because people are tired. They're tired of this mess. Well, I, you know, as much as I 100% agree with you, I don't think people are really tired. And I'll tell you why. I think people who think like that and who think that's the right way to think, however, they're not acting on it. Yes, we're tired. We're frustrated. But yet here comes another election. And we see people who do not, do not hold our community to any standard who will lie straight to our face and we'll vote for them because, well, they're not Trump. What does that have to do with anything? I think we, yes, we're tired, but we need to know how to take that tiredness and turn it into action. I agree. However, I think, and granted, this is no feather in his cap, but they are pushing Joe towards some type of concession. And granted, no, it's nowhere near anything we even think is the bare minimum. It's less than whatever. And no, it's not good enough. But I do like the fact that we're able to push him. There was never going to be a pushing of Trump. And there was going to definitely be, um, you know, definitely setting America further back if he retained the reins for four more years. And he probably would have found out a smart way to accomplish some of his disgusting things that he wanted to push. So yes, in that vein, I'm glad he's gone. I'm glad they're able to push Joe towards something. At this point, re harm reduction is all I'm going think for for the next four years. I have think no how, expectations. Think how sad that is. It's think very how sad. sad it is That's that sad. we have a president who is supposed to be leader of the free world who has to be pushed disgusting. to do a little bit of the right thing. Exactly. That is very sad. Exactly, Mickey. And I think that's my frustration is, and I use the $2,000 checks as the main example. Who made you go down to 1400 Who said, who, who was it? Who was that the one person? Means tested. Yeah, in the means to, uh. nobody, nobody from, no Democrat that I know of was pushing that idea. Like maybe Joe Manchin, but he's mm. just one person. You send somebody to his district to do an interview like you did for these $1,400 checks and guarantee that $15 minimum wage. I hope I'm wrong. I don't think it's going to be 15. I think it's going to be no. somewhere about 11 or 12. They're, and I they're think talking they're gonna, about that. They're going to pat themselves yeah. on the back. Like, look what we did. No. Oh. And, no. And not for another four years. Oh, my no. gosh. When, when inflation, <laughs> inflation will have eaten up the, the difference. Absolutely. Yeah, And then he was talking about over what? Four years or was it five? I think four, it's four. 25, so four years. Four years. Well, what, what, okay, four years from now, that's fine. But what about, you know, like right now when my bills are due, they're not going to put them off. And as far as I know, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm assuming these 1,400 checks are a one time payment. I haven't yeah, heard no, oh, yeah. anything about more payments coming up. Right. And the eviction moratorium is coming up. Yep. So folks, and there's like, what? Oh my God, some people forget, like $10,000 in rent. There's no way to pay this. No. Who's going to help? <laughs> Who's going to save America? Yeah, and it's like it's the been, means. You go ahead, Mickey, I'm sorry. It, it's been a year. So we're talking about a total of two, $3,200 over 12 months. That's it. Other countries are paying their people a thousand, two thousand a month. We're paying, getting paid three thousand two hundred over a year, mm. spread out over many months. And so, even if, like I figure, I figure the government owes every person over the age of eighteen at least twenty thousand dollars, at least, because if you think about all of those months we've been having this pandemic for a year. If you went minimum and said, okay, a thousand dollars a month, that's what twelve hundred a year. Plus, if you have children, plus if you, I, 
I just, I don't, like I said, I don't know who, unless 1400 was his intent the whole time. It was his intent the whole time. I'm just like, and but wasn't that's it, not what he said. No, that's not no. what he said. And if I was a Republican, all you gotta do is play the tape. It's like, look, this is what he said, but this mm. is what he did. Nobody said reduce it to 14. There was no, no Democrat saying, okay, reduce that to 1400, except for no. against, again, Joe Manchin. Mm. Cause he didn't want anything, I don't think. Exactly. Um, so just ignore him. Everybody else is saying, okay, nobody came out against that 2000. Now you're gonna say, well, no, you already had 600, but you didn't say that. Exactly. No, he, they were still I had, paying. go ahead, Mickey, I'm sorry. Now the $600 was in my checking account. Mm -hmm. Several days later, after it was there, Biden said, if you vote these two people in two thousand dollars exactly so just the timeline alone tells you he said two thousand dollars because the 600 was already in the past yep exactly well they're patting the media like is setting them all on the back for this and i'm like what what are you all gaslighting him for he hasn't done it he's done something the bar is so low because Trump put it underground. So just by not tweeting ignorant stuff, by coming out and saying the warm fuzzy words that people like to hear, coax you into a nice sleep, and by just not causing drama, he's the best president ever. His freaking approval rating is like 62%. 62%. Over half the country <laughs> loves him, man. And I'm like, for what? what? What do we love him for? for going back on his word about the money that people need, survival money. This isn't some just let me pad my pockets. This is stuff people need to survive. Going back on that, going back on a $15 minimum wage, half mumbly mouthing that unions are important when these companies are working these people to the bone and won't give them fair wages and won't give them benefits and won't give them time off. Or breaks. You know, won't give them COVID protections. And this is what we aspire to this is america we're supposed to be the most powerful country on the world in the world and joe loves to say there's nothing we can't do well until we need him to do something then of course we can't do that you know student loan debt. Why you can't do fifty thousand exactly tracy why can't we do fifty thousand you can do 10 but no. 50 is against the law <laughs> here's what i say about the student loan debt and i keep saying it i was like well if, if bernie and i told um, someone this I was talking to, I said, if Bernie was elected, he would not cancel $50,000 student loan debt. No problem. He would cancel student loan debt. Every period. And, and Biden can do that. He can. One, one stroke of the pen. He does, does not need the Senate to do it. Nope. One stroke of the pen and it's done. He doesn't want to. And that's what I, that's where I get so frustrated when people want to hear them saying these things. I'm like, he lied to you about everything. But because the face that's lying to you isn't the old face that was lying to you, you're mm -hmm. satisfied. You're going to keep getting the same thing that you're getting. You're going to keep getting crappy relief checks that don't address any of your needs. You're going to get keep getting higher rents, mm -hmm. more expenses. Minimum wage probably isn't going to go up this year or next year or the year after that. And for what? So you can say we got rid of Trump. Okay, Trump is gone. What does that, you haven't accomplished anything. Oh, well, no, that's not true. Within his first month, he dropped a bomb on Iran interests and killed about 18 to 20 people. So yeah, he's still accomplish, accomplishing that warmonger mi mindset that the neoliberals love. We got money for bombs, but we don't have money for uh, upping the uh, federal minimum wage. We can have wars in outer space, but we mm. can't have Medicaid for all. Really? Hey, he 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 lifted fifty percent of poverty-stricken children out of poverty. What about the other half? Exactly. What? And why are they not important? And what happens when that number, as most people, most economic, economic, um, most people who deal with finances <laughs> are saying that that number. <laughs> Economists. Thank you. I was like. You're welcome. Uh, her, economists are saying that number is going to go back down to the original so it's a temporary lift but it's going to go right back down so you're still going to have the higher you're still going to have that high rate of childhood poverty that you have Absolutely. so i'm like you haven't you're not helping 
anything. Nope. And like I said, people just had to become dissatisfied because until you do, it's, it's just like, no. And, and adding on to the Affordable Care Act will help insure some more people. Mm -hmm. But there still will be tens of millions who can't afford it. He says it's available to anybody who wants it. He doesn't finish the sentence and say, and can't afford it. Exactly. There are millions of people who cannot afford to spend one more penny. They don't have one more penny, never mind the Affordable Care Act. That will still leave tens of millions with no, no health insurance and or underinsured. Well, that's right. another thing that he could do by his executive pen would be to expand Medicaid. That mm -hmm. would just, he doesn't even, apparently he doesn't even need the Senate to do that. But is he going to do it? No, he's not going to do it because again, you have to want to do something to do it. Well, well his proposal his, has, go ahead. Thank you, hon. I know when he had his talk with the civil rights leaders, Sharon, Cheryl and Eiffel, had asked him about those things, asked him about using his executive power to kind of enfranchise the, the marginalized. And he said he wasn't going to do that. And he needs to reach across the aisle. He's got to, and he said it with an attitude, really nasty, like almost like how is the poor's asking me for something? And it's almost with disdain that poor people in this country need help from their government that they've been paying for years, their whole adult lives. Yeah, you're talking about the leak tape. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Mickey. I'm sorry. I completely forgot what I was going to say. Hold <laughs> <laughs> well on. That's okay. That's quite all right. It's just. And oh, I, I know what it was. Go ahead. His proposal for the Affordable Care Act was written by the ins medical insurance industry. Of course it was. And it will actually increase their profits. Absolutely. And it like supplementing Cobra like a hundred percent. And who can afford Cobra? No one. Well, what person out there, anybody that can afford Cobra, support us on Patreon instead because <laughs> your money will be well better spent because I don't know anybody that can afford Cobra. It is super expensive. Super Absolutely. expensive. And the thing that I guess that frustrates me is the media, especially the supposed left media, mm. they it's like they just, they saw the Messiah and boy, that they came off that mountain and they got that glow around Joe Biden's <laughs> head. And I'm like, um, no. <laughs> this well, they're, they're funded by the same people. So the same folks that are pushing money into these corporate Democrats' pockets are pushing it into the media. There's they're, They play their commercials all day long. I'm telling you, you can't watch uh, cable news without seeing medical this, medical that, medical this, insure that, you know, refinance your home and take out a second mortgage. Like all of these corporate moneyed interests have a monopoly on the people that are supposed to be informing us and the people that are supposed to be protecting us. We are literally by ourselves. And that's why we need to get this grassroots movement going. People like Nina Turner and Corey Bush, and Jamal Bowman, we need to back them up because they are fighting for the people. I think I read the other day that Charles Booker is thinking about running for Senate in Kentucky. That means he's coming for Rand Paul's neck. I fully support this. And I will be his number one cheerleader and putting every single extra dime I have into his campaign because we can't let the Democrats put up another Amy McGrath to suck up all the money and do nothing but lose. And, and you know, I, I love that because I, I had a, a former friend on Facebook. He apparently <laughs> blocked me because I was just too doggone to the left for him, I guess. Hmm. They was like, oh no, Amy McGrath, she, you know, wait a his argument was that me being for the things that Charles Booker is for is it's too it's too much people mm -hmm. are going to go for that I'm like no 70 percent of Americans want Medicaid for all I keep saying Medicaid and I know everybody's need I know everybody's like it's Medicare for all Medicare for all mm -hmm. most people want 15 dollar wage but that's too left that's mm. not too left. That's what Americans want. Exactly. What is wrong with you? And so you have Democrats like that. I guess you all call them meal libs. I, mm -hmm. I call I like to call them something else, but I can't on this show. <laughs> but I can in private. But mm. it, 
I guess I'm just <laughs> like, I wish groups like the Justice Democrats existed for those local races that I think are so key. Because until we get the city councils and the mayors and the governors and the state senates to change, Washington is going to stay the way it is. It's well, I don't know about the Justice Democrats anymore. I'm starting to give them the side eye. They went all out giving Neera Tandon a, a glowing review. I forgot about that. They should um, uh, select her for her position, even though she spent years bashing the social safety net, trying to drop bombs on other countries to steal their oil, taking money from big corporations to give them nice softball reports for the Center for American Progress. So I don't know if Justice Gem Democrats has been compromised, but I'm now giving them the side eye. I'm leaning more towards the DSA before hopefully, God willing, they don't get taken over, body snatched. Money money corrupts and it's happening right before our eyes. I don't know. I don't trust them. I'm, I'm hoping that the Justice Democrats in the House right now who are wavering and not standing up, that if we get more in there, like Nina, Nina. with more powerful voices, that they'll, they too will stand up with them. I'm hoping that they've been beaten down by Pelosi and the corporate Dems. Exactly. And I, I'm hoping that when we get more in there, they'll coalesce. Yeah, well, I don't know. They had a powerful voice in um, Cori Bush and Jamal Bowman. Like, they have blasted onto that scene, no apologies given, and it seems to have almost dimmed the light of the squad. And I don't know what happened. Like, I don't even hear from AOC anymore. I see Ilhan Omar, she's still trying her hardest and she's pushing this anti-poverty movement. And she's also trying to make sure she's fighting for the rights of immigrants because she knows that story. But it seems like it's almost drowned out and I don't know what happened to them. I get it, Mickey, you're right. The, the, the influence of big money and politics is really hard to battle against but it feels like they're being you know snuffed out and i don't know how to well, look that. look what just happened to jimmy gomez you know he wanted to get marjorie taylor green out and pelosi immediately got on every news channel and said that's his opinion not a, not the leadership's and did anyone challenge her and ask her why would she not support something like that not that I've seen. Well, it just happened, so not yet. But They're but it's a constant. It's been a constant. It's it's been happening anytime any of the progressives try to push for something. She doesn't just block it. She insults. She denigrates. She uh, she's nasty. Well, remember when Obama said that comment about the firing squad when he was talking about the progressives. No, you well, guys don't so remember that he said That's basically right. the progressives were taking a fire gun and just like kind of shoot them. Oh, circular firing squad. Oh, so, yeah. Circular firing squads. That's what it was called. Right. Yes, thank you. That's mm. what it was. I'm like, did you just say that? No, mm. you didn't say that. I'm like, oh, yes. I'm something I, I nag about constantly, and I'm going to nag probably in every show. Never donate to the DNC or the DCCC. Absolutely. Donate directly to the candidate of your choice, because that way you know your money is going to your choice. If you donate to those organizations, they will spend the, your money backing who they want, not who exactly. you want. They would exactly. never do that. <laughs> you do you want the examples? <laughs> you do you want the examples? I let's know. let's talk. Let's talk about uh, Marky who is somewhat progressive, in office, his people love him, and who did Pelosi back, both with the money and publicly, Kennedy, because exactly. her exact quote was, we have to keep the Kennedy dynasty going. Ugh. It's a sick name. It's and sick she's name. in an easy to win district, so she's pretty popular in her district, I'm assuming. In her district, yeah. But Mar but Kennedy didn't beat Markey. He sure Pelosi did. Pelosi and the DCCC all backed in all backed challenges to the four squad members. Oh, wait, four she, she but every was, one of them won anyway. But yeah, she absolutely. was the one that said something to the effect of we shouldn't do that. Wasn't she? Oh, the not, one that not, 
She didn't just say we shouldn't do that. She said she forbade anybody from mm -hmm. challenging incumbents. And then she blacklisted any company who would work for somebody who would challenge an incumbent. incumbent. Mm -hmm. Blacklisted them. And then she did the same thing. So yep. when she did it, it was okay because mm -hmm. she was doing it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Oh my gosh, people, we got to. Well, it's come to the point in the show we're going to take a, we normally take a five minute break, but this time we're going to do three because we got off to kind of a late start. I know three minutes, mm -hmm. but um, we'll be back with you guys here and I'll see you in three minutes. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are back for the second half of the show and rejoined by my panelists, and we're going to move right along to another issue that I wanted to talk about, and that is um, there are 43 states across this great, wonderful, sarcastic nation of ours um, that have um, somehow thought, because um, Black and brown people turned out to vote this time, that they think now is the time to rewrite voter laws that are going to discourage people from voting. Now, 200, I have 253 bills have been produced, have been yes. proposed. 253. Yes. And I have my feelings about it, but I'm going to let you guys go first. Well, I didn't know it was that many bills, and I didn't know it was that many states. So, we're just really shocked. I heard of Georgia. I heard of Texas, you know, Florida is always into some mess. I literally expect Florida to be the, the head of any kind of election bull crap. But that shocked me. You guys have wowed me. I didn't think I could be surprised anymore by this country's discussion. New York, blue oh. New York proposed some. Wow. Because I'm sure they, they were a little upset. They, they got them a couple of progressives. Mondaire Jones and Jamal Bowman came out of New York this last election cycle. And I'm sure they're just writhing. Um, we have to show up. And even though I don't care for some of Stacey Abrams' politics, I love that she has taken the mantle of fighting voter suppression. And I support that 100%. And we have to get out in that street and demand our rights. Yeah, and well, in New, New oh, York, yeah. Cuomo was the one who pushed for a Republican legislature. Ugh. State he did legislature. He did. He absolutely did. Okay. And he made a little backroom deal with Tish James. He would support her if she kind of fell on her, her sword about a lot of progressive policies. But I guess Tish James had something new for him because she's investigating him, she's investigating Trump. She has basically been like, you know, uh, the Kraken. <laughs> well, let's, let's hope she sticks to it because I hope she she's does. tough. She is yes. tough. As nails. And I'm sure there's a lot of pressure coming down on her. Wait a minute. And she doesn't care. Backtrack. You said that a Democratic governor, mm -hmm. which that's what Como says he is, made deals with Republicans. Is that what you just said? Yes. Well, he pushed for the Republican legislature. When That's you, why we have a Republican state legislature because of Cuomo. Okay, so uh, call me stupid, but um, how would that benefit him? Well, he's corporate, like they're corporate. There's literally yeah. zero difference between Republicans and corporate Democrats. They all have the same goal as to keep big business in power and to keep getting paid and funneling it through their campaigns and into their bank accounts. And so that's how, because they have the same policy he has, he's trying to cut down Medicaid. He's trying to pay the least amount of fees to people. He's pushing old people into sick environment or sick old people into old people environments where they will get more sick and die and then doing little back deals with the, the, home, uh, the, the senior citizen homes to keep them in their immunity so they won't get sued for their bad practices. He represents everything the Republicans represent. Yeah, and he's the reason he gave for pushing the elderly into the nursing homes is because we don't, the hospitals don't have enough beds. He never mentioned they don't have enough beds because year after year, he cut funding to hospitals. Absolutely. In the middle of the pandemic last year, the height when he was, everybody had him on a pedestal, his new budget had more cuts to hospitals. And yeah. he fought people who said, remove that from the budget. And he said, no. More cuts to hospitals in the middle of a pandemic. Now, what I didn't know is New York, which again I thought was a blue state, 
had laws it is. that were suppressing the vote. I knew I knew my state was gonna be in there. I'm like, watch Indiana Vita. Watch, just watch. I, I knew that. I'm like, okay. But the Georgia law was even more severe because it said that if you give food or water to people standing in line to vote, you could go to jail. Are they serious? Yeah. And they want to get rid of them. Um, I'm sorry to cut you off, Mickey, but they want to get rid of souls to the polls. That's, that's what I was just going to say. Like, black people can't vote some other day of the week. Like there's yeah. no other day in the week but Sunday. Sure, it's convenient yeah. to leave worship services and go vote. It's very convenient. Right. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to vote on other days of the week. Right. And there was a Republican, um, well, a lawyer uh, on the behalf of the Republicans in the Supreme Court. And he said it. He said it. They're, they're not even hiding it anymore. He literally said more people voting is less votes for the Republican Party. And so that's why they have to, you know, control the electorate. And, you know, when you talk about New York being a blue state, that only means that the people vote blue. That's all that means. Absolutely. It's the, and, it's the people. And, and they're swayed by that vote blue no matter who. And I really need blue MAGA and liberals to get that out of their head because just because they have a D next to their name does not mean that they have the people's business in mind. And I need, especially black people, I need us to stop with the symbolism. Just because there's a black face does not mean that they have your black interest in mind. That means that they are running on that and then they get in the office and they support the same corporate masters that the white person was supporting. So literally look past the skin color, find out what their voting policies are, find out what their history is. Don't just look at the symbolism and be just lulled to sleep over that. It's not enough. You need somebody that's fighting for the people. I will put 10 white people in office over any 10 black people if those white people stand up for the working class of this country and the marginalized class of this country and they're taking care of our business, the people's business. Yeah, I say that all the time. It's like, I will put in 10 Bernie Sanders over 10 Jim Clyburns in that's not even an argument to me in a heartbeat and I just found out this broke my heart because I love me some Maxine Waters loved past tense and I thought she was just so wonderful Auntie Maxine right well Auntie Maxine blocked Katie Porter from getting on the financial services yep. committee because Katie Porter was making it a little too uncomfortable for the rich people to to keep swindling poor people. And she was coming in with her props and Maxine didn't like that. So she blocked Katie Porter from the financial services committee so she could not get in these people's rears where it was really effective. It was letting the electorate know just who these people are. I had no idea about all the effery that Wells Fargo and Chase were doing. And I found that out through watching C-SPAN and watching Katie Porter chew them up and spit them out. They don't like that because that's their. She domain. was too. She was too good at her job. She oh, came with great. facts. She came with her whiteboard, which yes. they hated. She had never, never lost her temper, but she nope. didn't let them get away with anything. She would ask them something, they would evade, and she would continue to pound on it. And the the powers that be don't like that. The donors are not happy at being exposed. So Maxine Waters decided to cut. What was it? Four seats from that committee. Yes, and Katie Porter just just happened to be one of them. She did the job too well. She did what she was supposed to do. And the donors didn't like that. Yeah, and see, that's the kind of thing, even though we're talking about voter suppression, it's it's as though the and like I said, there's no hope for the Republican Party. So I won't even talk about them because they're they're just gone. They're just they're just gone and finished. It's like we don't need laws to suppress the votes. We have enough Congress people to do that already. Absolutely. Just yeah. looking at them would make me think, you know what, why am I voting for any of these people? Now, of course, Tracy would say I'd vote for a third party, but that's me. And I realize most people aren't going to do that. But if right. you just looked at what was in office, that's enough to suppress. You don't need a law. Just show them what's in Congress and be like, you're going to vote for this. Right. Absolutely. Especially, and then with Georgia, their new restrictive voting laws that they pushed, 
um, were saying that certain IDs weren't good enough. The same IDs that people use to basically get around in life weren't good enough. Their housing ID wasn't good enough. And But then they would close the closest DMV and the next DMV is like 20, 30 miles up the road. Well, if I don't have transportation, how am I gonna get 20, 30 miles up the road to go get a proper state ID to vote? They are literally breaking the rules of the constitution in front of our faces. They're playing in our faces and we got to do something. Well, there's a, um, there is a um, new law that's being proposed. I'm going to get this wrong. So <laughs> everybody in the audience, is it HR1? Mm -hmm. you oh, got it right. I got it right. <laughs> <I'm> like, yes, <laughs> that basically would make these laws mute. Yes, it'll pass Congress, but it's not going to pass the Senate. Um, it may, it may. I know Lindsey Graham was talking about filibustering until he fades. Man, hold on. So you think Mitch McConnell, the man that said that he would blow up the Senate if they got rid of the filibuster, is mm -hmm. all of a sudden going to turn around and say, yes, Black people, I want you to vote? Well, he won't vote for it. But if they do blow up the filibuster or do this, this edit that they're talking about where it's got to be a talking filibuster, they can get it to pass. Um, if they can get it, I don't know if this, because it's not budget, so it doesn't have that whole reconciliation thing. Yeah. So you have to get like, I think 60 votes. That's going to be tough, but whip it. I say whip it because they're not only um, disenfranchising black and brown, they're also disenfranchising white folks. And exactly. they, need to, they need to get on that, that soapbox, like I said, descend upon these cities and towns and let them know how the Republicans are trying to take away their right to vote. Yeah, because early voting, to me, benefits the elderly. Mm -hmm. And the last time I checked, there was a whole lot of elderly white people. Exactly. Last time I checked, I was like, exactly. that, that would benefit. It benefits the elderly. Exactly. It benefits the disabled. Exactly. It benefits the rural population. I mean, exactly. if, I, if I had to, I drive, luckily, where I live. If I had to go to the DMV, it would, it's a good 20-minute drive. See, there's no public trans there's no public transportation out here there's no buses there's there's nothing if you don't drive and a lot of people in cities never learn to drive they don't bother right. because they have public transportation right right but think about what the republicans are actually saying they're saying they're willing to cut off their own nose despite their face they're literally willing to throw away all of those early votes, all of those rural votes, all of those disabled votes, just to stop somebody like me from voting. Yeah. Well, they did well, don't find forget. that. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mick. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying they did find that Trump uh, poo pooing the whole mail in balloting system um, is a lot of the reason why he lost because the Republicans listened to him and chose not to vote absentee. And then that was no guarantee they were going to get there on election day to actually vote. So their voting uh, block actually went down where ours, ours went up. So, and that's why Georgia is also getting rid of the no excuse absentee voting. They, they know that it will, it will suppress the black and brown vote probably way more than it will suppress the white vote. And you think a lot of people in the inner city are poor, whether they're black or white or Hispanic, they're poor. Exactly. So they, they can't afford to travel. They can't afford to uh, what, hire a taxi, hire a bus. They can't, they can't, you can suppress their vote. Exactly. And the poor are mostly blacks, Hispanics. See, I think, I don't know, maybe I'm being hopeful here, but I think part of this is going to backfire because if you start telling, well, what I hope is if you tell black people, and I'm only using black because I'm black, because I don't know about anybody else. I just know what well, I know about people that look like me. If you start telling us, no, you can't vote, we're going to find a way to vote. You don't tell us we're not going to do something. Right. We're going to do it. So I, I kind of hope they keep going with it and then that'll make the, the, the voting rolls go up, but I don't know if it'll happen. But I hope that's what happens. I forget well, if probably... it was... It was either North or South Dakota. I can never remember which it was. Just before the midterms, 
the Republicans passed a law that Native Americans living on reservations, if mm -hmm. they didn't have a house number, and most of them didn't, mm -hmm. their, their homes on reservations didn't have house numbers. If you didn't have a house number, you can't vote. That's just disgusting. I'm throwing up at that. That is so disgusting. That's ridiculous. Are you going to tell the First Nations people that they have to prove residency? And they were here and, first. And no one, no one is calling BS on this? Was it at least thrown out or did that mess fly? Because I heard about it, but I didn't hear if it actually went to court. I didn't hear that. I, from what I heard, it passed. Jeez. And I know that they, the um, Native Americans did bring it to court, but I think it wasn't in time. Jeez, that's so disgusting. I'll have to do some more research on that. But, yeah, but just think of the mindset to say, well, oh, these people usually vote Democratic. Mm -hmm. So let's think of a way to stop them from voting. So they're doing it to every marginalized community, whether Absolutely. you're black, brown, poor, it doesn't matter. And they don't think, gee, let's expand our thoughts. Let's get, let's, let's just take our stupid ideology and make it make more sense for what people are actually going through. They don't think that way. No, they no policies. Way. No, nope, yeah. they don't no have policy. any. They literally no policy. Have no policy. No, they have two: stop abortion. That's mm -hmm. their. That's their one, and expand gun rights. Those mm -hmm. are their priorities. No, don't forget the third one. That's make everybody a Christian. Okay, yeah, because the rapture. You have to. You have to be prepared for the rapture. That's yeah. why the yeah. Jews in Israel are. You know, we have to protect them at all costs, so they can go to hell. That's literally this mindset yeah. and i'm just like i'm sick i'm sick of them and but i'm i don't know tracy i don't know if denying folks voting rights is going to work because you have a secondary you know suppression tactic going on that is either intentional or unintentional with the democrats backtracking on all these promises georgia showed up and they showed out and they put, they took the Senate back because they were promised a $2,000 check and they were promised $15 minimum wage and none of that is happening. So there's really nothing the Republicans can do that is a suppression method more than politicians finding out that they lied to you. And I'm not gonna let you lie to me again. There are several people, and I mean several people that has said, if they don't change course, I'm not voting for them in 2022. I'm not voting. Because the alternative is Republican, so I'm not voting for them either. So we are going to lose the House and the Senate, and any promise or hope we had of any kind of change is going to go right down the toilet. You might as well add the White House to it, because I don't. So that's 2024. They're definitely losing it in 2024 because either Trump comes back, and I know y'all thought about Trump that he's going to jail or he's not going to be Trump. If Trump has the inkling to run, he will run, and he'll probably win. He'll probably win. Because he'll have that same thing that Bernie had, yeah. because any kind of these corporate people that try to run against him, Trump is going to have that one concerted base. So where whoever's running against him has split the field, Trump has his one concerted base and he will win. There can be possibly, if Trump doesn't, a worse than Trump. Yes. A Trump, a Trump with brains. Yes. Yeah, and that's Absolutely. what you need to be scared of, because Trump is a nitwit. I mean, yes. I, I, he's just, I'm smarter than he is. Like, I'm, I don't have, well, no, he's actually. No, no, off no, no offense, Tracy, but my cat is smarter than he is. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I, I, I think my nine-year-old nephew is smarter than he is. Yes. But people, it's, it's, it's two things that always frustrates me about that, though. It's like, don't people realize there are third parties? Mm. That's why I was thinking, like, you don't have to vote for a Democrat, you could vote for a third party candidate. Now I know that comes with the whole, a vote for this person, you're splitting the vote, blah, blah, blah. I'm tired of hearing that because I'm like, you know what? If your activities were above board, well, maybe I would vote for you. Exactly. So- um, Well, I won't vote for a third party until I know it's viable. Excuse yeah, right. me, yeah. how do you think you're gonna make it viable if you Unless won't you back it? it? Exactly. But then that's also the candidate is going to have to be, you know, they're going to have to have a, I don't know, a revival of sort. Yes. You can't come 90 days before an election and tell me you're yes. running for the Green Party and I don't know who the heck you are. 
Howie Hawkins did that. And folks were like, Howie who? Like, you have to, like, literally what Bernie did last time, Bernie literally ran from the minute he didn't make it in 2016 all the way up to 20. Bernie had the momentum because he never stopped campaigning. He was going into those rural parts, listening to them, listening to their fears, listening to their, their, their wants and needs and trying to institute policy, getting on the ground with the people. And that's what whoever from this alternative party needs to do now, right now, not in 2024 or 2023. They need to be yeah, right exactly. now. Exactly. I, I, and I agree with that. But I think it's so hard because if you think about and you know, I know, I know a couple people running for office, but I do, and they say the same thing. It's hard when the media blocks. Well, not yeah. even put you on TV. I mean, I've had a friend of mine, well, not friend, friend, but an acquaintance that has been running for office, has sent out press releases, um, done press, can't get on the news, can't get out there to tell people that I'm like, you know what, you're gonna have to do. You'll have to take this to the old school. You're going to have to wait till the COVID kind of dies down and start door knocking. It's going to take something because if if the media just blocks you and nobody knows about you, um, then um, it's just it's just ridiculous. I mean, the media literally blocks third party candidates, yeah. and they always they always um, shade them like. Well, they're spoilers. I mean, that's that's what they did to Ralph Nader. That's what they mm -hmm. did to Jill Stein. That's what they did to Harry Hawkins. I mean, he, he can absolutely did that to Ralph Nader. Like y'all know, I used to be, you know, one of the dumb sheep that followed MSNBC and all the corporate media. So I believe that. I believe that Ralph Nader hurt um, Al Gore. That was the story that was spun. And I believe that for years until I met Bernie Sanders. And then I realized, no, Ralph Nader was offering an alternative to status quo. And that I big media machine is rough, man. It's rough I, because you can't, you can't get, you can't get on TV where people can see you and you can't raise funds because nobody knows you're running, but nobody can knows you're running because the media is, it's like this circular thing that keeps happening. And you know, I hear the criticism and what you're saying is right, but the- It's the, hard to break through. The barriers that they face, it's like, oh my gosh, are you serious? You cannot get a third party candidate on television. I remember when um, Joe Biden picked Kamala Harris mm -hmm. and they were like, oh, well, she's the first African-American candidate for vice president. No, she's not. Angela mm -hmm. Walker was. I'm like, yeah. I know that. But are they going to say that? No, because it doesn't fit their narrative. And exactly. it's got to be, you know, I wish I wish there was more progressive media besides, you know, the progressive queens, obviously, and the TYTs and the click babies and all those, because they're not getting, those third party candidates are not going to get on exactly. standardized TV. They're not. They're not going to have some follow the scandal. <laughs> follow the money. Follow yes, the money. Exactly. You know, if if the if the DNC and DCCC all back corporate Dems with their money and with their words, nobody's going to put the third party on because the the money is coming. The ones who own the media are the same ones who own the corporate Dems. Exactly. And think about this. Let's just say there was a third party presidential candidate and that person was gaining steam. You know what would happen? The Democrats would just steal their platform. Just like, OK, mm -hmm. we'll just take it. Right. Because weren't it wasn't at some point everybody for Medicare for all. Like when they first started campaigning for 2020, every so, single one of them were for Medicare Pete, for all. Pete and Joe had the same Medicare for all. If, if you want to. If you want it. <laughs> I'm like, boys, with, with, without the without the if you and can afford it yeah well at the first that. the very first debate when uh the host asked who's for medicare for all harris was the first one to raise her hand yeah and then she said i thought you meant should i just have medicare for all that didn't even make sense <laughs> 
Well, now, you know, I, I have a whole <laughs> thought process about Harris I will not get into because I want people to watch this podcast and not turn <laughs> off. So I'm like, I'm just going to keep my opinions to her to myself right now. Well, I, the way I see it during the primaries, she didn't win one delegate. Good. She ran out of money, which means nobody donated to her. Yes. So the people spoke. The people said, we're not going to vote for her. We're not going to donate to her. What did the Democratic Party do when the people spoke and said we want nothing to do with her? Put her up as VP. Ugh. Now, could you imagine the blowout? And I mean blowout. Joe would have had had he brought Bernie on as his VP. Now, I get it. It's not optically beautiful. Two old white guys running the country, one with a bad ticker and one with a bad brain. However, the amount of support Bernie had added to Blue MAGA, that would have been an unstoppable team. Or now, yeah. they might have been fighting all day long on policy once they got in office. First of all, Joe Biden was never, ever, ever, never, never, ever, never, never going to place Bernie Sanders as his running mate no matter what. No. Never. Well, after after the DNC stepped in and rigged another primary, mm. and we know that Biden knows that, when he got up there and announced to the world, I beat that socialist. Disgusting. I was sick to my stomach. Who didn't throw us something at their TV? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Let me take off my flip flops, my shoes, and my my phone, and I'm gonna just throw them right at that TV. Right, because if we're being real, Jim Clyburn, who I love, my brother in Christ, um, and Barack <laughs> Obama, they beat the socialists because they conspired with the DNC and the other candidates to drop out. But Obama says you shouldn't be the fire, the circular firing squad, and don't you know that if you you can't mm. fight for things because you're defeating the whole. Mm. And you can't defund the police because it's bad messaging. You should just let police continue to kill black and brown people with reckless abandonment. But I'm okay with defunding education. All the time. Oh, well, don't forget, in, in addition, Biden wants to give them, what is it, 300 million more? More dollars. Oh. More why is dollars. That a thing? Why is that a thing? Like, why? Why yeah. is that okay? Why has no one pulled him to the side and said, hey, Joe, not now. You know, why would you give more money to people? But then they're also talking about giving more money to the Capitol Police. The same but people that let folks come in there and run roughshod. Because if you speak against the police, mm. you're anti-blue. Mm. Well, I guess, guess we what? forgot about the blue when they was in there killing police that day, huh? You can take they off only blue. blue Lives Matter only came up when BLM started to gain steam. Exactly. The only reason for Blue Lives Matter is to detract and distract from the BLM message. That's exactly the only right. reason. Exactly. And they can take off their blue uniforms. I can't Any take off my black skin. Ever. Ever. Not that I would want to. I wouldn't want to. Oh, no, there's nothing else I'd rather be than black, period. But they got, uh, no, the police... Um, union or the police fraternity or the fraternal mm. order of police whatever mm. they call themselves that's a powerful break your kneecaps union absolutely, absolutely. you go against them not only you're going to have a public relations nightmare and I heard that's why people have such a huge issue with de Blasio because supposedly de Blasio has a lot of progressive policies but he bends to the will of the police union every time and doesn't hold them accountable yeah I yeah. have mixed feelings about him. He's he's good on a lot of issues, mm. but he's also bad on some others. Yeah, because he was one of the few politicians that kept supporting Bernie, which I admire him for. Absolutely. But then I heard about some of his other policies. I'm like, oh, well, no. Yeah. I mean, how long did it take for him to fire that cop that murdered Eric Garner? Like five years? Years? I'm like, huh? What? <laughs> I would have fired him immediately and dealt with the court mess for the next five years and stood in my, my stance. Yeah, that doesn't, oh my goodness. Wasn't he, wasn't Gardner the one who was selling loose cigarettes? Right, yes. right. And the crazy thing was, he was breaking up a fight that day. Like he wasn't even, yeah. they love to sell that narrative if he was selling Lucy's and that's what happened. No, there was a fight. He went to break it up. Police come and they start harassing him, not the people fighting. And then they choke him to death. And this man is dead forever because police looked at him and saw a threat, whereas he was actually trying to be the peacemaker. 
but yet people want black people to go stand in front of marginalized communities and get further murdered. Well, they didn't they jail the person that videotaped it on their phone. Yep. They absolutely put him in jail. Yeah. He 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 got put in jail for doing that. I think he's still in jail, actually. Mm -hmm. I forget what his name is, but me too. Um, but um, I'll insert have to black name here. <laughs> Exactly. But this is the portion of the program I gave you guys homework last week. And um, hopefully you all did it. <laughs> I'm asking them, Mickey shaking her head. No, I asked each of them to pick a woman because this is women's month. Um, and so I wanted to do four weeks, but that wasn't going. So I said, make sure that you pick something for this week. So Talisha, you'll go ahead with your pick. Okay, my pick is, and granted, I didn't do my homework like I was supposed to, so I boned up real quick before we started taping. <laughs> um, uh, my pick is Ilhan Omar. She is a congresswoman representing Minnesota's 5th District. Um, I love this woman. Um, she is an immigrant. She was in a Somali refugee camp in America decided to bestow its benevolence upon her and gave her a path to citizenship. She is now fighting the good fight in Minnesota and I'm so proud of her. She stands up. There's a lot of hate coming at her because she is a Muslim woman from a Muslim <laughs> woman from Africa. And they love to say how she needs to, well, Trump said she needed to go back to her own country, but this is her country and she's fighting for her country. She's fighting for her people even though we, like we spoke, that the Democrats also don't like her because she's trying to fight some of their corporate ways and they put money on her challenger this last election cycle, but she handily whooped them. And I'm so proud of her. She's, her stance on anti-poverty, her stance on Medicare for all, equal rights, you know, she's just, she's amazing. She is also the uh, progressive caucus whoop, whip, whoop, whip in the house. And uh, I'm just, I, I want to embody that. When I do run for public office, I will embody the strength of Ilhan Omar because she, through all the hate and all the aversion, she just stands and she shines and she keeps fighting. And that's what I want everyone else to do, to keep fighting. No matter how hard it gets, don't stop. And her constituents love her. Love her. Her people love her. And when you consider where Minnesota is and what you would normally think about it. Right. They love her. They do. They had a welcome party for her when she came home and they were all in the airport welcoming her home because they know not only is she strong, is she a survivor, but she's a fighter and she fights for them. And I need more candidates like that across all 50 from the bottom to the top fighting for the people so we can turn this around and make America, America what it says it stands for and that it's supposed to be about the people and American values. American values are supposed to represent that we take care of the least among these and all these so-called Christians that love to say that they're Christian and they're steadily trying to harm and hurt the lesser than. Um, that's not what Ilhan Omar stands for and that's not Ilhan Omar American values. That was a great pick. Thank you. <laughs> now, Mickey, since you don't have a pick, I didn't have one, but I, I can have one that okay. I, I can say almost nothing about except Ayanna Presley. Love that woman. I love the fact that she came out and said she has alopecia. Absolutely. And she took off that god awful wig that I hated. <laughs> and she, and it, that takes a lot of guts. And I think she's much more attractive without the wig. Absolutely. And Just, you know what, especially, you know, Tracy probably can attest to this too. For a lot of black women, our hair is our crown. And we make sure if nothing else, our hair is going to be the hip to the hop to just all be That's all. loathsome, not me, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, my mother had me in the beauty shop since I was five. I make sure every couple of weeks my hair is done. I make sure my daughter's hair is done. That is a black tradition to make sure your hair, your mane is looking above reproach, right? So for her to do that, it took a lot of strength and courage. And matter of fact, it brought tears to my eyes. It's bringing tears to my eyes now um, that she was able to do that. And it probably gave so many people that's wrestling with the same thing that don't have that huge platform to go and tell people how they feel to let them know they weren't alone. So you're absolutely right, Mickey. 
Ayanna Presley is very, very wonderful for doing that. And a strong progressive, very strong yeah. progressive, very, very strong. Even though she supported Elizabeth Warren, but we still love her. <laughs> You're from the same state, so I'll give her, I'll, I'll wink, I'll, do, I'll let it go. I supported, I supported Warren too. She was my second choice behind Bernie until, you know, all the bull exploded. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Well, I said my pick was going to be unusual. Um, and it is. I have picked Angie Davis or Angela Davis, the revolutionary black power, black queen, everything that I wanted to be as a child. Um, she, everything that I think that I want to be Angela Davis is she's strong. She, her opinions are her opinions. You're not changing her mind. Um, she did vote for Biden, but like I said, she's still, my, she's still one of my favorites. Um, she um, had a whole controversy where she had faced um, a prison trial and all oh, the government thought they had her. They thought, oh, we got her. And she beat them with a mostly white jury, which is mm. very unusual. Absolutely. Um, she is proudly, she used to be a con, well, let me backtrack. She used to be a part of the Black Panther Party until it went defunct. Then she became a part of the Democratic Socialist Party. And she was affiliated with the Communist Party. So Angela Davis has always been um, just... I don't know. She's Radical. everything. I'm trying to read up on some of the things that she's done. Um, she was born in Birmingham, Alabama, mm -hmm. which I didn't even hear the accent, but apparently she's from the South. Um, and she's a current professor and she's 77 years young and doesn't show any signs of slowing down. That's my pick um, for today is Angela Davis. Nice. Black power. <laughs> <laughs> Power to the people. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Well, everyone, this is the end of another show with the Progressive Queens. I am so sorry about all the technical issues that we had, but again, thanks, Mickey, for solving it. Easy solution. <laughs> Appreciate it very much. Um, we're going to um, say goodbye for now, but remember, this show comes out on Tuesday, so remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, and support us on Patreon. Thanks for joining us, guys, and everyone have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.